there. Um, I know I've been missing an action. Life has just been spinning beyond my control. And people that know me know that when my life is more than I can handle, I cut out the things that don't need to be there. I just kind of prioritize. And unfortunately, social media and things that don't generate income for me become the things that get cut first. But maybe you saw my Instagram post about while we were in Texas for my son's graduation, we had a bit of a mishap here. We had a toilet that overflowed. And unfortunately, well fortunately, honestly, um, they call it a category three emergency because with sewage water, there's more bacteria, more potential for mold growth. And so they just completely gut everything and put in new. So the way that I designed our house originally, we have pergo flooring throughout the whole thing. It used to be throughout the whole house, then we did an addition, and then I did a tile laminate in there. Um, and the powder room is right, in fact, here, look, not everyone can have a toilet in their living room. Aren't you jealous? Um, but anyway, so the powder room is right behind there. And the way that it, it leaked, it, it ruined this flooring in here, it ruined the kitchen flooring, it ruined the hallway, and then of course the bathroom and the ceiling down below. I get new carpet downstairs too. Um, so that's what I'm going through now and I thought, if I'm gonna get new flooring throughout, I might as well redecorate all of the rooms so that is fresh and updated for hopefully when we sell in a few years. I'm hoping, I, I would love to be the lake after my son graduates next year. My husband's not ready for the commute, so I think I'll probably just take long weekends every weekend. Um, but anyway, so I wanna, I figured this is a perfect opportunity. I can show you all the things that I haven't had time to do. I'm gonna be painting, I'm gonna be spackling. Um, I'm choosing colors right now, that's what this is mostly gonna be about. And I also need to show you, this is the room, I'll spin you around, this is the room that I did that adhesive wallpaper in. And I knew that there were some seams coming up with the temperature changes. I kind of expected that because normal wallpaper does that. But this one, I mean, there's some that are, you know, gapped a half an inch or more. I'll, like I said, I'll spin you around so you can see that, hopefully. Um, so I'm deciding, I kind of like it. It's gonna be covered with stuff because I use this room for my shop. Um, but I think I'm gonna try to choose a color that if the wall comes down and it's the white wall behind it, that I won't have to repaint when we move, but we'll just see. Um, you know, honestly, it's not gonna be my problem, is it? But again, I'm choosing colors that will be neutral, that will sell easily, um, and that anyone can just move right in. So, so that's where I am. So let me first, I'm gonna flip this around. I'm getting an extreme close up. Okay, so obviously those who know me, I am not tech. So I couldn't spin you around without pausing the video. So I just shot another scene. But you can see, here I'll pull back, you can see how much it's gapped. And this was just a matte um, Sherwin-Williams paint. It, was, it wasn't glossy, it's not shiny at all. But you can see that, you know, it, it's the seams have increased as the wallpaper shrank. Now, supposedly you can adjust for this by overlapping your wallpaper a little bit. Um, again, I'm gonna leave it for now, but probably just take it down when we move, when that time comes. But anyway, and it is, it's pretty much, you can see there it's buckled. And this wall, like I said, I have an old door that I use up here. I had pictures hanging, so I'm not gonna worry about it for my intent. But keep that in mind if you are planning on using adhesive wallpaper, maybe overlap the seams just a little bit to allow for um, shrinking. So I'm getting to the heart of this video, the point of this video. I've already picked out the flooring, two choices. Like I said, I'm gonna look at the luxury, what do they call it? Luxury vinyl plank and then laminate. Um, our original floors were like second generation Pergo. And I like Pergo. It has stood up to three boys running around. I, I was the mom that before 
the kids ever took their bikes outside when they got them for Christmas or whatever, they would ride their bikes around my house because it, like you go through this loop, you can make a complete loop because all the halls that connect. Um, is that the right thing to do? No. But do they do it? Yes, because that's what fun moms do. Um, and it stood up to our dogs running through the house. It stood up to me not cleaning it very often. And so I kind of like Pergo. It's, it's time tested. Um, and especially the new Pergos have, like it feels like wood. It, it feels like the weathered wood. Um, although I'm not going with the gray washes that are very popular because to be honest, I think that's too trendy. I think it's going to be like the pickled oak of 1990. It's going to be good for like five years, but then it's outdated and I don't want that. I'm going to go with something a little more traditional. It's going to look a little farmhousey because that's all they are unless I want really shiny and I don't want really shiny. Um, so that's what I'm looking at is like a medium brown. It's an oak, it has a dark grain to it, and you can feel the grain, so that's kind of cool. And again, I found one both in the luxury vinyl and in the laminate, but I'm leaning towards the laminate if we can get that with the insurance budget. But anyway, so since I have to remodel this whole house, I thought I would show you again how I choose color. You start with what you can't change. For me, that's gonna be the flooring, and I'm gonna say that I'm not changing this, although like I said, I'm probably gonna. Um, so, this has gray and white, but if you just put grays and white up there, you'll see that it's actually kind of a brownish. Um, and then the other thing that's going to be in the room is this pillow, which is actually, I found it at a thrift shop, $2 and the cover removed so I could wash it. So perfect. And it goes on this blue sofa. I got a cheap natural cover in this same color, which is kind of a yellow, a yellow white. Um, so I probably won't match to that because that's going to date quickly if not already. But like I said, it's a sofa the dogs lay on and bark out the window, so I'm not worried about it. But anyway, so I'm going to pull you, I tried to do the color videos. I'm pulling you close, guys. I tried to do the color videos and they just don't show up on camera, not the way that the naked eye works. And it's very frustrating because I really have tried. I know I keep telling you, but see here, you, you can maybe see with this. I'm gonna put my glasses on because I am blind. Um, but you can see these are actually all the whites that they call white. And you can see there's like gray whites, there's a pink white, here's a yellow white. And this is why at the lake I say that I'm doing 50 shades of white because you can literally find 50 shades of white. So what I've done is I just started putting it next to this and you can see this is the one that I used at the lake. I don't know if you can see that. That's the fireplace wall that when you look in the pictures it looks white but here look how gray it is. That's actually one of my favorites right now because it's just a hint of gray. Um, okay how about you how about if you've ever used extra white? I'm gonna hopefully pull you close. Extra white if you look is actually blue. There's an, a blue tint to it. And maybe because it reflects, this is extra white. This is ceiling white. And I'm hoping that'll show up on camera. As you look down, you can see, this is why I like Sherwin-Williams cards, because it shows the gradation of the colors. So I don't, I'm hoping you can see this. This is what frustrated me. I tried to show you and it wouldn't show up. But anyway, so I'm staying away from these because they're too blue. When you look at them next to the gray, it's blue. Um, and then as I said, look, I mean, these, you can obviously see that the, the orange that's in them, this one has some pink down here, but yet here, this is intimate white. Okay. That's like light pink to me, or maybe even like a salmon or something, but anyway, so I'm going back to this. Um, I don't want this room to be the cold gray that it was. I had it repose gray. Let me pull you over, which is a great color. It's one of my favorites. Let's see if you can see that. Oh, the sun's going to get us. Let me have you come this way. Ah, I told you I'm not techie. All right. So this is repose gray. I love it. I have used this color at the lake house with, um, Eric's room at the first lake house had yellow 
repose gray and turquoise. It was fresh and clean and wonderful. This room was here. Let me, you want to see this sofa? You'll see why I covered it. And there's my toilet again. So that was in here until just probably Christmas or January when I bought the white cover. Um, so it worked in here. It worked with the wallpaper. It's a nice neutral gray. Upstairs I've used it that it's in Eric's room that had Maryland red and Duke blue from when he was doing summer lacrosse with a couple of the local MLL heroes. Um, so it's just, it's a nice gray, but if you look at it, it's a little cool. It's a neutral gray. It's one of the most completely neutral grays, but it's a little cool. So I want to stay away from that. So I want a warmer gray or white. So I'll pull you back and then I'll show you what I'm leaning towards. As I said, I'm probably, see these, I don't know if you can tell, it's a little brown. I don't want brown. These were the walls at the first lake house and paired with white trim. This is so shoji white. Paired with white trim, it actually looked pale yellow. So it, that's why I'm such a color geek. There's so much you can do with color by just playing them, using the shadows, using the surroundings, and playing up on the reflectiveness or the the colors. Like again, using the white makes it looks yellow, etc. Um, like I said, this is the one at the lake, and I'm I'm considering this. Though I might go down here to pediment, but again, that's kind of gray. So what I would do is then go measure it against the um, repose. I don't want it as dark as that. Another one I'm looking at is this Eider White. Let's see. Gotcha. I'm blocking you with my thing. There we go. This is Eider White. It is one shade lighter than the re repose gray. Um, and if you look down this card, let me just, I know it's, my videos always get long, but I do try to teach you if I can find, this was my absolute favorite card with Sherwin Williams, if I can find it. Um, Eider White is one up from the Repose Gray. It's also the dovetail that's in my basement. Oh guys, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll pause this or maybe I'll just make you wait. Need some music. Nah, 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 nah. Probably gonna edit this part because I can't find it. Let's see, agreeable, agreeable gray. That's my mom's hat. There it is, repose gray. So as you see, there's here's the wall color that's in here. And then this was the color that I did the first lake house wall. This is in my basement. This is my absolute favorite card that Sherwin Williams had, if you want a gray. Um, it's also the same as Ben Moore, Nimbus, Pewter. Oh, I forget. Whatever card that has, it, it starts with Pewter, Nimbus, and then goes down. Um, but if you look at it, it's hard to tell in here. It looks black, but there's a lot of brown in this. And I think that's why it's such a nice color is it's a little earthier than some of the modern grays. But anyway, so I'm thinking about the Eider White because I know it would go because the Repose Gray went. But anyway, so what I did is pulled that I'm gonna have to edit this again. Let me pull back my whites. I wanna show you one more thing. Okay, so here's that Eider White. My poor color decks just get abused. So I'm pulling up this pillow because I remember I told you I was gonna work with this. Let me pull you back again. This is why I need an assistant. Who wants to come be my assistant to help me do all this crap so I don't look so stupid on TV? Anyway, so here's the pillow. See, it, it doesn't go at all, but I like the blue. I had a blue rug in here. This, even though it's yellow, it's okay. But so then I would pull this with it. It's not my favorite, but again, I don't care because I'm probably gonna change the, oops, got a nail back there. I'm probably gonna change this cover um, down the road or just get rid of it when we ever move. Again, you know, this is, 
I have to look at this house as a temporary house. I don't want to put a lot of money into it because we're not going to be here forever. Um, so that's the first step is choosing the colors, which when I get them nailed down and decide for sure, I'll show you what they end up being. Um, I'll probably do like a storyboard. I did that. I don't actually do a board. I take a big Ziploc bag and put all my color choices with it. And then I take it to the store with me when I shop for everything. Um, so I'll put that together when I get it nailed down. I'm going to show you how to spackle in this room if you don't. I mean, I do it actually. I was taught by a drywaller how to spackle. He was fixing my mom's house. And so I'm like, hey, show me the best way to do this. Because you know me, I talk to everybody. Um, so I'm going to show you how to spackle. I'm going to paint the trim in here. I'm going to take down this ceiling light um, or ceiling fan that's up here and put up a fixture. I'm probably going to put this fan maybe in Eric's room because um, I took that fan out years ago, which was really stupid. But his room is one of the hotter ones in the house. And what else? I guess that's what I'm going to be doing. Just show you from start to finish how I go about, you know, picking the colors and making sure they work. Um, not that I'm an expert, but I think people agree and I think I do a nice job with it. So there. Anyway, so thanks for tuning in. As always, another long one. At least, you know, I'm entertaining. But Oh, and you like my shirt? Nothing like goodwill cast-offs for when you're working around the house because you don't spend a lot of money. Um, I guess I'll talk to you soon. Hope you're having a good day out there, and I gotta get to work because I got a lot of stuff to do, including painting the ceiling. <laughs>